In this lecture, we are going to cover the normal distribution and how we can use it for calculating probabilities. So here's a small example. It's known that cholesterol level is um, a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, but can we use the knowledge about the population, the mean and the average of the cholesterol to calculate the probability of being in one of the risk groups? So the learning objectives of this lecture is that you should know what characterizes the normal distribution, be able to calculate the probability for a draw from the normal distribution, and know what the standard normal distribution is. So distributions in general, there exist many different types of distributions. There are some which works with count data, there are some which works with several categories of data that is known as multinomial distribution. Then there is normal distribution, exponential distribution, log normal, and all these go for continuous data. For continuous data, knowledge on the normal distribution is very useful, and it lays the foundation for working with all the other types of distribution. That is, an, that is um, the scope of the central difference theorem, which will be covered in a lecture later on. So here are the functions or the math behind the normal distribution. If we talk about the probability curve, that is what is plotted here, and that has the formula like this. So it is an exponential, and you see that x minus mu is uh, squared, so it's symmetric around the zero point here, and then there is a scaling factor here with sigma. The probability density curve, that is the area under this curve, that has the form of this. So what it is, is that we integrate this guy up here uh, from minus infinity and up to a point x. There is no closed form solution for this one, so this is as close as we get in terms of writing it out mathematically. So let's, let's try to use this for calculating um, a probability for a certain draw. So the setup is that we have a distribution of, let's say, that we measure cholesterol, and we say that this cholesterol level is normally distributed with the parameters sigma and mu. So this is the center of the distribution, and this is how widely it's spread. Um, then we would like to answer the following question. What is the probability that x is larger than 200. Well, that is hard to tell if I don't know these numbers, but I have some knowledge here. I know that this value is 178, and I know that this value is 31. So it's centered around 178 with a standard deviation of 31. So if we just make a small drawing here, then we would have at the average, we would have 178. And then around here, we will have 200. So what the question goes is, what is the probability for obtaining a value larger than 200? Well, that is exactly the area here, just below this line here. So what I do is I use um, R to calculate this. So let's go into R. So there is a nice function which is called p-norm, which we use to calculate areas under the curve for the normal distribution. And if you want to know what the p-norm does, then just hit put a question mark in front of it, and you will get a description of what it does here. So the p-norm, I want to calculate the probability of obtaining a value larger than 200, and I know that the mean is 178, 
and the uh, standard deviation is 31. So if I hit enter here, it tells me that the probability is 0.76. But wait a minute. If we just take a look here, we see that the area here is way smaller than a half. So something must be wrong. So let's go back. This one calculates the probability of obtaining a value less than 200. So if I want to calculate the probability of getting a value larger than 200, I need to put one minus in front of this one. So what it returns to me is that the probability of having a value larger than 200 is 30, 24%. So this one up here is one minus the probability of x less than 200, one minus 0 0.76, 0 0.24. So this level 200 here is considered if you have a cholesterol level higher than 200 you are at medium high risk so the probability in the population is 0 0.24 so that is one fourth of the population actually is running around with a medium high risk of uh, too high uh, too high cholesterol level so the standard normal distribution is instead of Calculating distributions or normal distributions around a particular mean and a particular standard deviation, the standard normal distribution is constructed in such a way that we scale and um, shift the distribution to have a mean zero and a standard deviation. So any normal distributed response variable can be transformed to be standard normally distributed by centering and scaling. So how is this done? Well, we take the original data, x, and we subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation. This is referred to as set scoring, auto scaling, standardization, and, and so forth. So if we go back and see at our example, where we have this one, well, if we, instead of having x, we make a new variable c, which is equal to x minus divided by this level here, we would see that the probability, and this one is then normally distributed by zero, mean zero, and standard deviation one. So the probability of x being larger than 200 is the same as the probability of z being larger than 200 minus the mean of the distribution divided by this one, the standard deviation of the distribution. So this is equal to the probability of z being larger than 200 minus 178 divided by 31. So let's see how this is done in R. So before we had this calculation, but instead of using 200 here, I simply subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation. And now I have a distribution which is centered around zero and with a standard deviation of one. And what you see is that you get exactly the same answer back as when you plug it in uh, with a mean specified to be 178 and a standard deviation of 31. The default in R is that the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1, so we can simply just remove these and we will get the answer back. So in short, we can say that we say that x is normally distributed uh, and when we know my uh, the sigma and the mu, um, we will write it as in this form that x is 
uh, normal distributor with these two parameters. And that is exactly the same as the trend, uh, transformation of x, where you subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation, is normally distributed with zero mean and standard deviation one.